Hello dear viewers, now we'll begin the assembly of the uh, master grade uh, rig dom by uh, putting together its head. First, I uh, plan to put on the mono eyepiece onto the innards of the head. The innards of the head I painted in a shiny metallic colour and uh, applied a black wash on it to allow the details to pop out. Meanwhile, the mono eyepiece I painted in a clear pink uh, paint with a clear pink paint. Now this the shiny metallic uh, uh, surface will actually allow the mono eyepiece to shine that little bit brighter when light falls on it. Now, although I didn't have to paint the whole thing in a metallic silver color but, but I did so anyway because I think it looks kind of cool. Now let's proceed on by placing the uh, black headpiece onto the innards of the head. Now this head piece, I didn't actually paint it. All I did was to apply a, a flat uh, clear coat onto it. The brand that I used was the Mr. Super Smooth Clear from uh, Mr. Hobby. Now, okay, it's, it popped out again. It's actually a very simple step, this uh, putting on the head piece, but it's, it's looking more difficult than it really is because uh, as always, I am assembling this piece at a very uh, odd angle to allow the video to be taken of the assembly process. Now let's move on to this uh, clear piece, which is unpainted, uh, onto the uh, uh, red uh, armor piece of the helmet or the head. Now this uh, red color is painted using a combination of Mr. Ho Mr. Colors uh, Shine Red and Red. The Shine Red is a very uh, bright, vivid red, while the red itself is uh, not as uh, bright. But a mixture together gives it a nice kind of combo, not too bright and not too dull. So that's the head piece fully assembled with the mono eye peeking out behind the clear visor. So there you have it, the assembly of uh, Big Dom's head. And we'll proceed now to the next step. The next section of the rig dome to be assembled will be its uh, upper torso. Now it consists of parts which has been uh, top coated with uh, the super smooth clear as well as parts which have been painted with uh, paint. Now I'll explain which is which as we go along. Most of the grey parts you see here are top coated with the super smooth clear while the piece I'm holding here for example, the metallic uh, uh, part which I think houses the the, uh, the upper half of the rocket veneers have been painted in a shiny uh, metallic colour. Now, they have also been uh, applied with a black, black uh, backwash and uh, clean up. Uh, this is uh, the section which covers up this the lower section of the the this uh, metallic uh, section you see here and this the decal you see on this piece that i'm holding with my right hand is actually just a sticker i did not have any water decals on hand for rig dom so i mainly use uh, the stickers as well as the dry transfers that were provided with this kit so what's next for this uh, upper torso it should be the uh, let me see. It should be the. Uh, I think I'll place place the uh, rocket veneers themselves first. Now the reds you see here have been painted, uh, with uh, if I'm not mistaken, a combination of shine red and red as well, and I'll just hook it up to the. Uh, metallic section via a small ball joint. 
the ball joint uh, allows uh, some degree of movement for the rocket veneers. So next we'll have the covering that will enclose this uh, metallic section of the rocket veneers. Now there is uh, some marking on this back section, this cover section, and that is actually a dry transfer. And if you look at it closely, things didn't go so well. So the, the markings for the, uh, the rig dome were actually a bit uh, damaged. The dry transfers were a bit damaged. Okay, let's see if something is preventing me from... Oh yes, it's, I haven't really hooked the back, the lower half properly all the way in yet which is why the back cover couldn't fit on top of the metallic section. I think I've done it now. So let's try the back again. It's so much easier. So if when things don't go as planned, there's some step that we might have not done properly, I assume. So as you see, that dry transfer there, the markings, which is, I think, the MS-09R is a bit damaged. Okay, the piece I'm holding now with the right hand is actually a clamp which will hold the heat saber later on. It has also been just top-coated with a flat clear coat. All the grey pieces and the black pieces you see here have just been uh, applied with a flat clear coat. Now let's move on to the front section of its upper torso. The markings, the symbol and the number 19 you see here are dry transfers. Now I'm going to insert a clear yellow piece which I painted onto that round hole there. And as you can see, I painted the back of it with uh, the back of the that round indentation with a silver uh, metallic color. This allows the clear piece which I'm holding to shine that much brighter when light falls upon it. There. So uh, it's not really fully in yet. Okay there. So okay the Labels you see behind the cover for the upper torso are actually uh, placed there with a the masking tape so that I know which part I'm working with. So let's put the cover for the upper torso onto the whole sub-assembly. And I'm pleasantly surprised that the super smooth clear coat that I put here is very resilient and uh, although it will scratch if you if you dam if you scratch at it or scuff at it too hard but in in normal rough handling it seems to be uh, taking it quite well and not being scratched at all Let's move on to the neck piece. This piece is this piece is rather loose. I assume it will be much tighter when the head goes on top of it. Next up, we have the shoulder guards, I presume. Shoulder pieces. This is for the right side. Yeah, that's the, the neck piece is really really loose. Okay, now we go on to the left shoulder piece that goes in there. So that's the upper torso of the rig dome. Fully assembled.
some sections painted, some sections clear coated. Now let's move on to the next section there. Next, we have the uh, lower torso of the rig dom, which has the, the this piece here, which I'm holding on with my right hand, and the pilot figure, which is fully painted. Now, the, the innards of the lower torso, I did not paint as, at all, because I assume they will not, they will be completely hidden from view. And as such, I did not paint it at all. Now, the pilot figure is fully painted. And here, I'm just pushing it in securely using a cotton bud so that I don't scratch the paint. That's a fully painted rig dom pilot, which will most likely be completely hidden from view once everything is covered up. So now let's move on to the, the cover the coverings for this uh, lower torso the black pieces that cover up the lower torso uh, has just been top coated with a clear coat the Mrs. Super Smooth Clear that I've used for all the pieces that I top coated same with the back black piece as you can see the this top coat gives it a very smooth clear finish and a matte finish to it too as well so that any plastic warping that might occur on plain plastic is uh, concealed so let's just push the two coverings together doesn't seem to want to close on this side we we'll just have to apply a bit more pressure there Still not going in. That's it's finally in. Uh, just needed a little bit more pressure. So now let's move on to the pilot's door. This hatch, sorry, hatch uh, has a sticker on it. And this hatch can be opened and closed but I, I, I suspect I won't be doing much opening and closing in the future for fear of uh, scratching the clear coat that I've applied on top of these uh, black coverings. So let's try that again. There. So that's the pilot hatch covering the pilot and now hiding it from view completely. It can be opened if I have a sharp enough uh, object to pry it open like this but I, I think I don't really want to do that. I, I think I'll, I'll most likely scratch the clear coat so I guess I'll just leave it be. So there you have it, the lower torso of the rig dom that is fully assembled. On to the next piece. So now we are going to put together the rig dom's waist. Um, from the pieces you see laid out on the table here, you can see that some have been painted red some have been uh, flat coated uh, with a clear coat, matte clear coat. Some have been painted in dark violet color and some have been painted in a metallic color. Now let's begin the assembly process of the waist by putting together the uh, side skirts. This involves a simple process of putting the inner piece which is have been painted red as you can see here and uh, onto the uh, black piece which have just been given a clear coat a matte clear coat 
just trying to push the pieces together as far as they can go so that they fit snugly together and isn't loose. Now the grooves in the red pieces have been given a black wash so that the details stand out. So now let's move on to the other side skirt. The process is the same, just putting the inner red piece onto the black piece. So that's the side skirts done. shall move on from here to the front skirts which are larger in size but the process is the same it involves putting on a red inner piece onto the uh, black outer covering it seems to fit in much easier that's the left front skirt now for the front right the right front skirt you we, we on the black piece we have a sticker decal which gives it that extra detail there that's the decal there so these are the two front skirts fully assembled now let's look at the inner section of the waist this whole plastic piece has not been painted while the piece that are fitting onto the inner piece is just is the black piece for the groin area and it just has been given a flat coat now let's put on the side skirts first There's a limited up and down range of movement for the side skirts. I believe this will eventually give the legs a greater freedom of movement, as we'll see eventually. Now let's put on the front skirts. First the right one, the right sided front skirt then we go on to the left they fit using via a ball joint seems rather secure so that's the waist section with the side skirts and the front skirts attached now let's go ahead to put on the assemble the back skirt initially the the process is the same it involves putting the red inner piece onto the black piece and this black piece also has some sticker decals on it like two round sticker decals with a target-like marking as you'll see later now this small piece is supposed to hold the red piece onto the black piece more securely Seems to be quite difficult. It's a very small piece and it doesn't seem to want to fit into that. Oh, 
thus securing the two pieces together, it keeps popping out. I'll try, have to try that again. something else first before I try that again let's try putting in the rocket veneers the boosters oh, the front skirt has come off let's put it back in again so that's one of the rocket veneers this has been painted with a combination of gold and titanium the gold being on the insides of the rocket veneers while the uh, titanium colour is on the outside so this is the final one, the third one ah, the front skirts aren't, aren't as secure as I thought they are they keep popping out now but the side skirts on the high end on the other hand seem to be quite secure so that's two rockets attached so let's put in the final one wait before that oops Let's try doing that, that small piece again. It just will not sit securely into the hole that has been assigned to it, which allows it to hold the red and the black pieces together very securely All right. this is driving me absolutely nuts off camera and come back to you guys later because it's, it doesn't seem to be working I'll give it one final try no it's just not working so guys, I'm going to do this off camera, then we'll come back and have a look at it again. Okay, see you again soon. Moments later. So guys, we are back. I've uh, put together the, the side piece that you see here off camera because it was just so fiddly and difficult to put together uh, at this weird angle that I have to be work in in order to frame this assembly process. So I've put it together off camera. So now let's move on to the third rocket veneer, which attaches to the back waist, back skirt, sorry. 
then the whole thing should slot in place when the back skirt is attached onto the waist which is what I'm trying to do now just making sure the fitting is tight oops that goes the front skirt again Applying a bit more force to the back skirt. Okay, as you can see, the rocket veneers or boosters can move, has some degree of movement, which will be good for posing, especially when you decide to take shots from the bottom. So let's try this again, pushing the back skirts onto the waist. Just using that bit more force. Yeah, I think that's that's okay. The gold and the titanium color contrast well with the reds and the blacks. At least that's how I feel anyway. So let's just give it a little bit more push to ensure that it's really really secure I, I think it's okay anyway let's put on the the front skirts the right one seems to keep popping out I guess it's a bit loose okay now let's put on the outer armour which is the dark violet that you see here first the front section which if you observe closely has some uh, dry transfers as well as thicker decals on it which gives it uh, a lot of detail that red triangle is a dry transfer. Now, now let's put on the side sections. These markings here you see are stickers, sticker decals. Same with the one on the other side. Finally, we have the back piece. which will fit snugly onto the waist. This one has no decals or markings whatsoever, the back armor piece. So there you have it. This is the waist section of the Bandai Master Grade Rig Dom, fully assembled, some parts painted, some parts top coated. And with the waist section, completed we can now move on to the rig dom's uh, limbs such as his arms and his uh, legs so i'll see you in the next part